G'day guys, Philip here. Today I want to talk about something that is so dear to my heart and that is building a bear market crypto portfolio. So we're going to cover three things, okay? The first is building a winning bear market portfolio. The second is leveraging DeFi. And the third one is your accumulation strategy. So without further ado, let's kick things off. So as you guys know, everyone on crypto Twitter, everyone on YouTube, everyone on TikTok, everyone on Discord is always telling you to buy it the dip. But I don't actually think that's a great piece of advice, especially in this bear market, right? Everyone that made money in the last bull market did so because they were researching, they were studying, they were analyzing trends, they were analyzing previous bear and bull markets, right? Not because they aped into Dogecoin or Shiba or, or Cumrocket or any, any of those, right? So the point is we should be accumulating and learning in a crypto bear market, right? There's no path to success if you're going to continue to buy alts that bleed and please look at any alt chart and you'll see Phantom down 700%, you name it, Matic down 600%. You're not going to create generational wealth or become a millionaire if you start collecting these alts now, right? So I feel like the market hasn't bottomed yet. And if you continue to collect while the market hasn't bottomed yet, you're just gonna bleed out and bleed out and bleed out. Why do I think the market hasn't bottomed? Because we're still at inflation 8%, right? And we see what's happening with 8% inflation. You've got rate hikes starting. You've got quantitative tightening starting. You've got all these things that are against us, right? So we're not nowhere near where we need to be in terms of breaking through all-time highs. Now, I know if you look at Twitter, just yesterday people were talking about, where well, this is it, the bull run's back on. What do we do? We dumped. We dumped to 29K on Bitcoin and 29 something on Ethereum. The point is all time highs will come again, but that time is not now, not in this macro environment. So for the time being, we need to accumulate and learn. So what do we do? What do we do? What, how do we set ourselves up? So here we've got four different types of bear market portfolios, okay? Starting from the low risk category, medium low risk category, medium high and high risk category all depends on your risk appetite. In the low risk, you're holding mostly stable coins and your HODL assets like Bitcoin and Ethereum. In your medium to low risk categories, you start dipping into some blue chips or things that I consider blue chips and your altcoins. You might have an altcoin that you think is going to do really well in the next bull run, so you start accumulating now. In your medium to high, you've got a few more altcoins that you think will do well, um, but still keeping a steady supply. Um, of your HODL assets and your blue chips. Now, do you guys see what the difference is between the medium low and the medium high? It's the amount of Bitcoin that you have. And so I've been a big proponent in not holding Bitcoin because in a bull market, everything else outperforms it. ETH outperforms it, Solana outperforms it, right? AVAX outperforms it. And in a bear market, I don't even wanna hold Bitcoin because it's gonna dump 50, 60, 80%. So I'm okay with people limiting their allocation to Bitcoin. That's something that I do personally. I try to limit my allocation to Bitcoin, but maximize my allocation to Ethereum. And then in your high risk category, you've got even more altcoins, even more of the stuff that you think will outpace Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now it's super important that the altcoins that you're holding outpace Bitcoin and especially Ethereum. If they're not outpacing Ethereum, then there's no point holding them, right? You might as well just hold Ethereum. You've got some more stable coins to buy the dip during capitulation, etc. Might I add, the altcoins that are going to outpace Bitcoin and Ethereum in the next bull run are not going to be the same altcoins that outpaced Bitcoin and Ethereum in this bull run. If you look at the coin market cap chart, right, historical coin market cap prices in say November 2017, what you're going to find is that of the top 10 assets, none of them are in the top 10 today, except for Bitcoin and Ethereum. EOS was there, XRP was there, all that other crap was there. Did it outpace Bitcoin and Ethereum? I don't think so. 
So the point is, there's going to be new trends, there's going to be new narratives, there's going to be new gaming tokens, new DeFi protocols, there's going to be all this new stuff that you want to jump on that bandwagon to maximize your gains. None of this uh, existing stuff, or very few of the existing stuff is going to do well. Regardless of your risk tolerance, the main takeaway from that bear market portfolio is that you should hold a sizable amount of stable coins. Okay, now, how are we going to grow our stablecoin portfolio? There's three ways. You're going to take profits during pumps, you are going to farm stablecoins, and you are going to stake digital assets from your portfolio and then convert them to stablecoins. Now, let's go through each of them. Number one, so for example, taking profits during pumps. Let's say you're a firm believer in Nexo, right? It's a centralized exchange. They've also got a card. That, that you can spend your crypto on, that sort of stuff. Let's say you're a firm believer in what Nexo is doing in the space. You see that their token price is quite steady. You also hear that Binance is releasing it on their um, exchange, right? So people can actually purchase, buy, sell, trade Nexo on Binance. You're already holding Nexo because you're a firm believer in Nexo. Now, when that thing gets listed on Binance, it's going to pump. Right, so this is what I mean about taking profits during pumps. If a token that you're holding is pumping in an obvious downtrend, then you know it's a narrative driven pump and you should dump that, right? Dump that token and buy in at a lower price. So I'll go through an example with you now. So if we look at the Nexo price, right, over the last uh, six months or so, you'll see it's been in a clear downtrend since the market peaked in November 2021 but pay careful attention to the volume bars at the bottom. So this is a helpful indicator for me anyway, of market narrative um, or tailwind effects actually as well. So since Feb 2022, there's been minimal trading volume compared to the mid end of 2021. However, following the Binance listing, the token price surged 60%. What does that mean? Why? This was the perfect time to take profits. Why is it the perfect time to take profits? I'll give you three figures, right? The crypto market is in a clear downtrend, so it's going to continue going down, most likely, right? Pair that with all the other macro stuff that's going on, high, high inflation, Fed hiking rates, QT, all that sort of stuff, pair it together, it's just gonna continue to go down. So when your token pump to the all time high, what do you do? you should be dumping that token. The second thing is the volume surged, right? Volume surged compared to the average trading volume. Another clear indicator that volume surge, price is surging, there's a flurry of activity. Have they done something groundbreaking? No, they haven't. They've just been listed on Binance. And the third thing is the Binance listing created a favorable tailwind, right? So there were more social mentions, there were more people talking about it on crypto Twitter, on Instagram, and all the other stuff. And the clear example of that is Luna Crush's daily social mentions. So what do we see? It was 100 to 300 daily social mentions before it was listed on Binance. What happened after it was listed? 1800 social mentions daily. What does this tell you? It is time to dump, especially if the price went to before all time highs, right? Just under all time highs. Now, courtesy of Luna Crush, we can also overlay the price and the social mentions together to prove the point, right? We see that the price, price surge matched the last three candles to a T. What does that mean? It means peak social mentions equals peak price. Falling social mentions equal falling price. The bottom line is you should take profits on holdings during pumps so that you can replenish your stablecoin holdings and then you can buy back in at a lower price or you can buy back in during a capitulation. Number two, farming stablecoins. Okay, so the best website to use for farming stablecoins or farming anything for that matter is Coindix. Coindix, you can jump on their website, you can filter for stable coins, and then you can sort by APY. Find the juiciest APY, but here's a hot tip for you. Find stuff that has a little bit of value locked, right? So maybe 100 million, maybe 50 million, maybe 20 million, maybe 10 million, right? None of this $3,000 worth of total value locked. Who knows who's put their money in there and what they're trying to do, right? So find something with a little bit of total value locked in there, 
so that you know it's more likely legit. It's not legit per se, but it's more likely legit, right? So Luna had, uh, what was it, 12, 14 billion, even more total value locked, and that uh, went meow. So it's not a dead giveaway that this project is legit if the TBL is high, but it makes me sleep better at night knowing that I'm farming where, you know, 100 million more dollars is farming as well. So those people that are, that are a little bit more advanced can jump onto farming platforms such as Beefy Finance, which you'll find on Coindex as well, Planet Finance, Bancor, Beethoven X, all of this stuff has some juicy returns for your US dollar denominated stable coins. Just remember, for the love of God, that stable coins are not risk free, right? There's DPEG risk, there's regulatory risk, and there's operational risk. DPEG, we saw what happened to UST. <laughs> oh, 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 shiver my timbers. Second, we've got regulatory risk, right? So stable coins can be outlawed. What happens then? And number three, operational risks. Yes, we think the team behind it are doing fantastic stuff and keeping it safe and doing all the right things. Meanwhile, they're having parties in Colombia. And so you just never know with these sorts of things, right? So just be careful, right? Stable coins aren't US dollar. They're supposed to be denominated and it's supposed to be equivalent to the US dollar, but they're, they're not the US dollar. So there's a little bit of risk involved there. Now, moving on, third and final one. So staking digital assets from your portfolio, right? If you've been buying on the way down or if you're holding from the peak, I hope that's not you, but if it is, if you're holding from the peak, you might as well put your proof of stake assets to work, right? If you're holding Solana, you should stake Solana. If you are holding, insert proof of stake asset here, you should stake it, you should put it to work. At least that way you can earn a yield while you're in the middle of a bear market and your coin is going down 20% a week, okay? I know, it's the fact of the matter, right? So then the next question is, where do I stake, right? So there's two options for you. With Ethereum, I would recommend going with through Rocket Pool or Lido Finance. Um, take a look at both of them, they're pretty straightforward. You can just jump on their website and uh, it's a pretty straightforward uh, process. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below and we'll try and get them answered. Now, I'm going to use Solana as an example. I want to put forward two apps, validators.app and stakeview.app. And the reason we use these apps is to find high performing validators with low commission fees. Oh yeah. So basically, if we go into validators.app, we will see that the largest validator pool on Solana is Everstake, right? It has 625,000 users and about 12.9 million Solana staked. However, it also charges a 7% commission and an 11% skipped vote percentage. What does this mean? The fewer the votes skipped, the higher the rewards earned each epoch. The higher the rewards, the greater your own share. On the other hand, Shinobi Systems, which is Stakeview's own validator, has a consistently low skipped vote percentage and commission fee. So if we jump on this Stakeview app, what we'll see is the Shinobi Systems APY. Uh, on the other hand, Everstake is 4.36%. So not only is Everstake lower in terms of your rewards, it also takes a higher commission on your rewards as well. You could then build a comparison tool to determine the yield difference between the two validators based on these metrics. So we've created a simple tool and if anyone wants access to the tool, leave a comment in the description below. So this one just shows for a given listed APY that we find on Stakeview, for a given commission that we can also find on Stakeview and validators.app, for a given skipped vote percentage that we can find on validators.app, it gives you your total earnings minus your commission and skipped votes, right? So your total earnings for a year is 3.58 
in this case, Solana for every 100 Solana that you have, or 5.04 Solana that you have with Shinobi Systems. Bottom line is, just because it has the most people staking on, say, Everstake, it doesn't mean that it's going to give you the best yield. It also doesn't mean that they're the best. Everstake might have the most stakers, but for example, in this case, Shinobi Systems uh, far outperforms it in their yield. The other one that you might want to check out is Leapfrog. Leapfrog are doing some excellent things on the Solana staking platform space, so check them out. Aside from DeFi and staking and selling during pumps, you also want to be accumulating cash so that you can deploy it when the time is right. During capitulation cascades, when we know we're nearing the end of a bear market and going into a bull, that sort of thing. How do you do that? My favorite is side hustles, but also a full-time or part-time job as well. You don't have to be the next Gary Vee. Shit, for like 17 years doing tips for free? Okay, probably just gonna document it. Okay. But you do have to want it, right? You have to want to make it, you have to want to make generational wealth. You want to make a million bucks so that you can uh, spend it on a Lambo. I don't know, whatever it is that tickles your fancy. But the point is, if you're super into kefir grains, right? Get yourself a starter culture. Start this selling those grains, right? They just grow out of nowhere. If you're super into soccer, but you sit there every Friday and Saturday watching soccer, why don't you start getting your referee license and going out and uh, refereeing on the weekends, right? It's a little bit of extra money. Go for a run and test your skills and speed out. And it's also, it's more fun. Are you into beauty? Great. Jump onto Alibaba, get some beauty products and start selling them in your local area. Do you consider yourself a techie or a tech head? Do you know how to fix mobile phones and computers? If that sounds like something that you're interested in or you've done it before or you're competent in, that's fantastic. Start advertising your services on service seeking websites in Australia that would be Gumtree and if you need parts you can just head on over to Alibaba or Amazon get those parts and fix computers and fix mobile phones for people. Side hustles and full-time and part-time jobs are surefire ways to be able to earn additional income during a bear market and to top that all off we sprinkle a little bit of recession incoming there right and you want to be able to protect yourself you want to be able to pay your bills so these things that i just mentioned may seem abstract but i know that they work because i've done each of them at some point in my uh young young life but most of all bear markets are for learning right you want to upgrade your skills you want to learn how to trade great do it while the markets are down you want to learn how to code fantastic pick up a python book or a rust book or or there's a million resources online just get on there and start learning if you want to learn about the macro environment that's fantastic join up i've been saying it to everyone sign up to real vision they've got all the greatest experts in the space right coming together whether it's bond markets real estate commodities housing crypto you name it they all come together and share their learnings, share their wins, share their losses, that sort of thing. So I recommend everyone jumps onto Real Vision. Remember, take risks, shoot your shots. Generational wealth and millionaires of the next bull run are created in bear markets. So get on it. That's all we have time for today. If you like the video, like and subscribe. Click these two things here. And we'll see you next week for another round. Peace. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Okay, when this thing... Okay. Um... <laughs> what, what was I talking about? <coughs> it's getting hot in here. I know, it is fucking hot. <laughs> 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 <laughs>